Hi, everybody. This is, this is Marilyn. Do we have any uh, audio? I had my mic turned around backwards. Um, so, yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. This is Marilyn, and it's time for the noon edition of Welcome to My World. This is the 25th of July, and it is a Monday. And this is kind of a summer Monday morning. Actually, it's it's a little more like an August uh, Monday morning. We just have uh, not had a heck of a lot of things that have moved really, really well for us this morning, but one thing I do notice is the um, when you look at the, the four U.S. indices across the board, and I, I monitor those as a little bit of a comparison one to the other. In other words, where's the strength? And it, it almost looks like uh, the ES and the YM are on a completely different planet from the NQ and the TF. Uh, NQ and TF are in a tight chop, and those of you who like to trade NQ, I think, have had kind of a tough morning of it. Um, but the the movement, and it was all to the downside, big time, was in the ES and the YM. Uh, one of the things I think that may have had some effect on that YM this morning, there was big news out that. Um, uh, Verizon is buying uh, Yahoo, and Verizon is in the the Dow 30. And I, if that pricing is true, it kind of looks to me like Yahoo is <laughs> beyond on sale. Um, they're sure not getting very much for that. But anyway, I don't need to worry about it because I'm not buying it. So, um, crude oil has been on a downward bend this morning, and somebody had a really good, uh, made a really good point and asked about um, looking at my chart, this uh, trend catcher entry on crude oil right here. This is just so nice, very, very nice. Had a, a red uh, MVP, very nice. The problem with taking this for me is it was two o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm not, I'm not really up for trading at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm pretty well sound asleep. But when I did get up and got everything loaded and got, uh, I don't like to load my computer and then just rush into a trade. I much prefer to take my time and make sure I kind of have the overview of everything. So I noticed it was fooling around this uh, red ice. It had pretty well departed that. And I thought, well, gee, if, you know, it, it was about 7.30, 7.40 right here. And I, that's just... I didn't have everything loaded. I hadn't gotten my charts all right in the center and every kind of thing I like. So I waited a little bit. I thought, well, it's probably, you know, gone right here. But about, this is about 820. This is very, very slow in here. There was a nice touchback to this EMA. And if you took that, um, it just never looked back. The um, the place when it's this slow is it's a little bit easier if you go over here to the six tick and go back here to about uh, I don't know get past the early the wee early morning hours. This started making these downward moves. And sometimes when it's slow, it's a lot easier to use a slower chart because normally we use a 12 tick 
on crude oil, and I discovered that in a slow, slow market, and for getting a little bit of a heads up sometimes, um, six tick is this is a good example. When when you see this kind of thing forming, uh, we have had a lot of traders that are not real familiar with the way that we do things that come in and they say, well. I'm looking for a reversal on crude oil. That's nice, and I'm glad, but what my suggestion is, we've got the volume coming off here. It's noon time, and these 30-minute candles have just gone down and down and down, and they show no sign of weakening you're going to have to see a significant reason for this to turn around. Now, it may go up, you know, but the the general trend is down. It's well below settlement. Going into the close, it might start to return to settlement. Sometimes things do, especially when it's been um, this slow. If you look at these range boxes, I mean, it took an hour for one diagnostic candle. That's just, uh, those are really, really, really hard. The uh, big trade of the morning, super nice, super, super nice trade this morning. I'll put this chart over here so we can look at it, was on bonds. Um, this just, Lovely, 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 yummy, yum, yum. Um, this was about a 15 tick trade, and it was very easy to see. I, I'm not sure this, the trend catcher little yellow marker here I like is buried because it's right at this deviation level. And if you pay close attention to Daryl's um, instruction videos, um, these markets tend to, uh, you know, for me, it's the bus driver likes the deviation levels. But when this, it came down here and tried to test its low of the day and didn't have much success in breaking through there. So it pushed off, um, and this, you got a, a trend catcher arrow and the entry right here. Um, at about uh, 7115, and this thing up to 7130 and even beyond uh, was pretty pretty easy. If you miss that, there was also a cross of these two EMAs right here, and um, that makes a good entry point also. And then there was a touchback to this EMA, and even another touchback. So Let's see, if this 24 up to 04, yeah, that would have given you 10 ticks on that too. So there were a couple, three possibilities on um, on bonds this morning. And by this time, um, I'm usually well finished with even looking at bonds. Gold had a nice move up today too. So speaking of gold, it's this contract we are on the um, August contract for gold, and it completely expires in three days. So the the volume has not started to move in to the next uh, month. And this time, let's see here, gold is going to go uh, from August to September. It, it will go August, September, October, and then it jumps two months. So gold does that. It's not an absolute of, of every time we roll it, it's to the next month. So just be cautious and, and pay attention to when you do roll it, what month you're rolling it. But we're going to go to September. Um, certainly by Wednesday, We'll just kind of see what happens tomorrow, but there is no volume going into that September call, uh, contract right now. So that's just something to have on our on our radar. 
we've got the VIX is coming up. It's come up a dollar sixty one and it's trading right now at thirteen sixty three. So that will very frequently happen when the ES is going down, down, down. We'll see how, how much this or or how long this lasts. Tomorrow morning we're gonna have um U.S. news around uh, 9 o'clock is uh, not really a lot of news. Uh, 9.45 is flash services, not too much. 10 o'clock, we'll get some housing and consumer confidence. I love that one. Consumer confidence, you can, you can go to the mall and figure out what the consumer confidence is. You might see a lot of people there, but start looking to see if they have any uh, store bags with them. It, a lot of people go to the mall. They like to socialize and what have you, but when they're not buying anything, there's not a lot of consumer confidence. So anyway, um, I think that's about it. Uh, Brent has just kind of, it's very tight. It doesn't want to go anywhere. The um, whole energy sector is is going down and down and down. I mean, this is gasoline and motor oil and uh, you know all these things that we don't trade, but they do affect the entire um, the entire energy sector. And let's see. Um, yes, there is a thanks, Aaron. Aaron posted a real nice, um, a real nice link to the Nadex rollovers. Nadex rollovers are different many times, not every single time, but many times than the futures. So Nadex has control of when you roll the contract for Nadex trading. If you are trading gold futures, that's a different animal. Um, they're tied very closely together, but they they won't necessarily, many times Nadex will roll earlier than it would be prudent to do for trading futures. So just kind of keep that in mind. So anyway, you'll get a post, you'll get a, a notice when you open up your Ninja Trader, and um, they'll probably put something in the room also for you. I think that's about it. Um, I don't see a heck of a, oh yeah, the big thing is also, uh, is it Wednesday? I think it's Wednesday. Let me double check this. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday at 2 o'clock will be a FOMAC uh, statement. They're meeting today and tomorrow. And then they'll, you know, inform the world of what they're doing. If you recall the last couple times before FOMAC, the Tuesday before, it was really, really slow. So keep that in mind, especially if you trade. Um, if you like to trade the Nadex spreads, tomorrow might not be a bad day to be looking for iron condors. We'll just have to see how uh, how the market goes. But Wednesday, that will be a big deal, a very big deal. They are trying to talk themselves into the idea that the economic numbers are just wonderful in the U.S. And uh, they are if you don't count a lot of things, which they don't count. 